pull up here. Are welcome, welcome everyone to Center for Spiritual Living Ocala. I am Reverend Cindy Grimes, and I'm so glad you chose to spend your afternoon, at least an hour, with us today. And I believe that it is going to be worth your time. And thanks for hanging out with all of the crazy that we've already had this afternoon. So here is my welcome screen. This is who we are at the Center for Spiritual Living, Ocala. These are the things that we value and why we come together. And the number one thing on that list is spiritual growth and practice. And isn't it fun when you get those opportunities to grow right in front of everybody and to practice staying in a space of peace and calm when things are swirling around you and uh, uh, not going the way you want them to. Um, we value love and we value appreciation community, freedom, creativity, health and wholeness, generosity, and financial well-being. And our mission at Center for Spiritual Living Ocala is to provide spiritual tools for personal and global transformation. And isn't that something that we can all use right now in the midst of all of this crazy coming out of 2020 and coming into 2021 and the things that happened this week. Um, our purpose is to awaken humanity to its spiritual magnificence, which is sometimes hard to see when you're in the middle of mess as we are right now. And our vision is creating a world that works for everyone. That means a world that works for me, a world that works for you, a world that works for all of us. And let me, oh boy take us out of the screen here. I want to share a prayer with you and I've got to pull it up here uh, by my friend, Teresa Fieberts. Let's see if I can find it. Well, it appears all of my technology is not working real well today. Here we go. Let's see here. Teresa wrote a really beautiful prayer um, as events were unfolding um, Wednesday and Thursday, and I really loved it, and I thought you would too. And if you receive our newsletter, um, no, I don't think there is a mention of it in our newsletter, actually. What I did was post it on our, on our page. So let me see if I can find it on Facebook here. Well, I am just not used to having this much technical issue. And I can't tell if you're seeing me or if I'm frozen. All right, guys, here we go. That's just not working. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is switch gears again, take another nice deep breath. And I will do our invocation for this morning. It looks like we're not going to get to have Teresa's prayer. I'm just going to uh, breathe into the moment right now and invite you to just close your eyes if you're comfortable doing that or just soften your gaze and take a nice deep breath. And breathe into that place of calm and centeredness and peace and love and joy. To that power and presence that runs in and around and through all things. I am part of it. Reverend Marie Kirkland is part of it. Reverend Teresa is part of it, as well as our practitioners and Richard and each and every one that is on this call right now. That presence of spirit runs in and around and through all things. And so I can speak my word for myself and for each one of us here today that there is a place of peace and calm in the center of this world. And that is the place from which all things emerge. That is the place of truth. That is the place of wisdom. It is the place of love and it is compassion and joy and every good thing. And so it is from that space that we come this afternoon and we speak our truth and we share and what needs to be said is said. What needs to be heard is heard. And I just affirm that there is a healing balm that is falling on each one of us 
as we allow the emotions and the feelings and the pain of past events to just flow through and just make their way through our systems, physically, emotionally. And know that the spiritual truth is that there is a peace that passes all understanding. And we are part of that. And we know that we are in this ever evolving world and place of, of joy and of love. And we know that spirit never goes backwards. So we just acknowledge that we release all that no longer serves us, all that gets in the way of us being our biggest, brightest, boldest, most beautiful and loving selves. And we release all that no longer works. And we step boldly, courageously, powerfully into the greater yet to be that is calling us and beckoning us. And so I give thanks for this time that we have together this afternoon. I give thanks for the words of wisdom that will be shared. And I give thanks for the presence of spirit that speaks through my words and through Reverend Marie and through each one that is tuned into this broadcast today. And so I release these words with joy and with love and with gratitude, knowing that all is well exactly as it is, no matter what it appears to be, the universe is conspiring on our behalf. And I am grateful. And so it is. Whew. All right. And so my guest today, I'm not going to be able to pull up her, <laughs> her bio. It is extensive. She is the Senior Minister of Living Aligned Ministries. Reverend Marie is a good friend of mine. She was one of my peers in the ministerial program, but she's also one of my mentors. She is a deep and beautiful, wonderful soul. She is the first guest that I had as we um, came into COVID last year and uh, moved our ministries and our broadcast online. She was the first guest and it just feels very appropriate to have her with us this afternoon. And um, I'm just gonna bring Reverend Marie on in. And welcome my dear friend. Hi there. It is so good to be here with you um, at the beginning of the year and happy new year to you and your community. Thank, Thank you. you for inviting me. Thank you. I'm so sorry. I don't have your bio to let people know about your two MBAs and the fact that you are <laughs> working on your doctorate degree, which I didn't realize. Um, oh, that, tell us a little bit about your path right now, where you're at. Wow. Okay. Well, I am, as you shared, I am the spiritual director of Living Aligned Virtual Ministry. And we have an online community. And what our community, our big purpose is to, we bring together people on the spiritual path so that we may um, together live intentionally, practice living int intentionally, deeper, um, building deeper relationships so that we can live aligned and forward and have a greater impact in the work that we're doing in the world. So that's um, what, what our community is. And personally, my um, personal philosophy is to be able to, in the midst of anything, to be <laughs> able to, and right now we are in the midst of everything, but mm -hmm. to be able to live aligned with spiritual principles and practices and intentional living. And so a living aligned philosophy so that we're doing both. So yeah. we are um, that foundation beneath us. And yes. with that, I advocate for spiritual communities so that um, we can eliminate burnout during these times, right? And focus on spiritual enrichment. So one area of our life enriches the other areas. Yeah. So that's my focus. Yeah. That's so awesome. And you were a pioneer in <laughs> digital. <laughs> ministry you know before we had to do it before <laughs> people even thought it was viable or mm -hmm. effective or any of that you were right there on the on the forefront saying yes this is the way to go yes and you know one of the reasons um that that spoke to me is that i do not believe that geography should limit one's spiritual growth so wherever people are in the world 
you know, should be yeah. able to be, you know, connected in community, in spiritual community. Yeah. Well, I just, I thank you for leading the way with that. It was, uh, you know, what, what we needed before we knew that we needed it. Yes. Yes, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. And you know, that's we I think you and I we we had a we our conversations are basically like a journey. And so we had a conversation, I think it was last week, talking about um insights and how people develop and um do things. And so Steve Jobs, that's one of the things that made Apple so successful is that he um knew his why. And he built that company builds things that people don't know that they need. Yeah. And so, and that's what we do in spiritual community, isn't it? You know, we take these principles and we share it with people. Yeah, yeah and we prepare ourselves. Yeah. Exactly. Right? right. It's building that yeah. spiritual muscle. It's it's mm -hmm. developing that that bag of tools. It's uh, it's doing the practices. Yeah, so that you have it when you need it. Exactly. Right and uh, yeah. Uh, I well, I don't know about you, but I know I needed it. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the reasons I think it was just so perfect that you are our guest today is uh, the fact that you are a military veteran. Yes. And I yes. just wanted to speak to. I would like for you to speak from your perspective as um, as a veteran, as a woman of color. Uh, regarding the events of this past week that um, have been, I think, so difficult for all of us as Americans to to witness, to process, to move through and move past mm -hmm. and uh, understand where we need to go and what we need to, to do to move forward in a positive way. So um, anyway, let's let's just, yeah, let's just go yeah. right into it. Yeah, just jump in. Okay. Come on in. Wow. I do want to share, talking about the process and the, the things that occurred this week, I like many Americans and probably all Americans, I'm still processing it, <laughs> okay? So mm -hmm. this is, um, this time sees me and I am sitting right in that intersection. I talk about intersections a lot. So I'm sitting in that intersection of being human right, of being um, African-American female, of being a retired um, army veteran and being a spiritual leader. And so looking at um, and experiencing these events from all of those different areas is, is certainly a paradox, it's certainly a paradox. So um, as you shared, I retired from the army, I retired in 95. And so after serving the country for 20 years, five months and two days, uh -huh. I, <laughs> I um, and I know that because you get a DD-214 when you retire. It tells you exactly how long you've been in. But um, living from the perspective of being in the military, right, and um, supporting the Constitution of the United States. You know, in serving this country, looking at what has been going on, not only on Wednesday, but over so many years, and not only over the last four years, it is um, it is not why many people in the military serve the country, you know? And so the freedoms and um, all of the things that, that matter, um, you know, you just look at it from a different viewpoint. You know, and a lot of those questions might begin with why. Well, why, you know, why is this going on? And at the same time, I um, well understand that we all have, there's certain freedoms that we are seeking to have and experience and certain ways that, that we show up. So also as the spiritual leader, looking at, well, what we teach is personal responsibility. We also, you know, are looking at things from, um, yes, we want a world that works for, for all and certain things are necessary, you know, to evolve, for us to evolve and for change that happens, you know. So it's, it was interesting. And as an African-American woman, my question, and like most, most people, there was a disparity. 
there was a disparity in um, between protesters and what happened on Wednesday. So there's so much to unpack and so much to um, to lean into, and it is a process. I know over this past summer, I experienced a lot of um, things and it showed up for me in my body temple and you know anger and impatience and all you know everything that we had to process. And there is a we have to process it, and it takes conversation, it takes compassion. It takes a lot of things. So I don't know. I know through our conversation here today, we will probably unpack some of those processes to do that. Yeah. And, you know, it takes courage, too. Yes. Courageous conversations are necessary. And um, it takes courage to say, OK, I want to have a conversation with someone first to be able to share what's going on within ourselves and be vulnerable enough to do that and to listen and hear somebody else's point of view. Right. And I believe that um, safe spaces are needed for that. Yes. Yeah, safe spaces are needed. And a lot of times that's in the circle aspect within our communities. Right. And um, so everybody's voice can be heard. You know, and I think that's um, yeah. what we're tasked with providing as spiritual community, as spiritual leaders, particularly in our movement as Centers for Spiritual. Right. That if if we can't provide the safe space for these conversations to, to happen, mm -hmm. who, where, you know, who, right. who better than us? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. But that doesn't change the fact that there were things that, that are very upsetting, you know, and yes, mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. and yes, we yeah. look past the circumstance to to the truth, right? To that place of peace and calm and love and all of that, but you still have to move through. You don't get to go around, yes. you get you mm -hmm. don't get to bypass it, you don't get to go underneath it. You have to feel it. And I know yes. I was feeling it this week. Yes. Um, you know, my one one of the things that I share all the time in in um in my community, in our community, is to lean into what you're feeling, you know. Lean into it because bypassing it is um, doesn't support growth. Lean into what you're feeling and do your work. You yeah. Know? And lean into spiritual practice and seek um, someone for conversation or prayer support. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So, Absolutely. yes. Yeah. yeah. Lean into the fear. Lean mm -hmm. into the discomfort. Yes. Right? Yes. Into the practices instead of running the other way, which is... I, you know, for myself, that's a tendency to I like, I don't want to look at it. I don't, that's too, ugly. <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to deal with that. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't go away from not dealing with it. Right. Right. It doesn't. Yeah. yeah. So that's uh, where change occurs. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And transformation occurs. And, you know, the thing is when you, when you lean into that thing that you're so afraid of, very often you find it has no substance. Indeed. Right. Or it's not nearly as bad as what you made it out to be. Mm -hmm. yeah. And one of the things and we're talking about leaning into. So. Probably like myself, and I know you and I, we, we spoke about it a little bit. One of the things that we may find ourselves doing is to leaning in externally and um, kind of like immersing ourselves. Oh, and yeah. what's going on. And so what I share, be be aware, be informed. But if at all possible, do not immerse yourself in it. Yes. Right, to where it affects you, right? In a, in a negative way. In other words, it shows up in your body. So be, be well, well informed so we know what questions to ask. We right. know how to base our conversations. Yes. And yeah. so, but 24 seven, while it's available, <laughs> The news is available and the conversations are available on whatever platform that we're, that we're on. Um, the face-to-face -face or video-to-video well, -video conversations or by phone or something to process is um, effective as well. Yeah, there is, as you said, a balance, right? You yes. You can be informed, but don't drown in it. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yes. Yeah. And that, that is hard, I think, for everyone to know their own balance. Mm -hmm. Like what is mm -hmm. starting to 
over the edge and and I certainly um I get a little too close to that edge sometimes <laughs> find myself in the downward spot you know um, yeah. and I, I went I went there this week I did mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah and then I went into practice went into practice yeah. went into prayer mm -hmm. there was even and um, I shared in my newsletter for, you know, for the community that's received it. And if you haven't and want to get it, do write to us. Um, I was trying to put my letter together, right, to the mm -hmm. company. And I just, I couldn't, I just couldn't do it. And I was in such a negative frame of mind. I was really glad that I couldn't mm -hmm. put it together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I didn't want to, like, memorialize all of that, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Burn it, write it down, let it go, you know, but don't hang on to it and don't put it out there where people are going to be reading it and and bring it back up. <laughs> yes. So you just kind of you let it go or you find your go to people that mm -hmm. uh, are trusted, that can hear you out and, and can help you work through it. Yes. As I shared um, earlier this summer. I know that I needed to do my work even before I um, brought it to my community. And what we what we did as a community is that we had a series of um, maybe yeah workshops. We had a series of um, things where we had to living and navigating the pandemic uh, of um, you know 2020. So we talked about the COVID pandemic. Then one week we talked about the social pandemic. And we talked about how to navigate and what's, what is the synergy between the two and how to navigate it. But I had to do my work first. Mm -hmm. you know, I had to I had to go within and see what um, what that was what was I experiencing, you know what was coming up for me, and then allow it to come up, and then do my work while I was being supported at the same time. Mm -hmm. Because it would have been a, a totally different experience, and then I was able to. Um, connect with the community from principle, right, and not from reaction. And so, what's going on right now, I believe, is that um, the reaction mode is just—it's just been a few days, you know. And mm -hmm. so, as we're looking at it, it's uh, the reaction is so um, top of mind. And so, what the invitation is is for us to each go within and see where we are. And then, like you say, go to those those go to people because every day is is um everything is still unfolding, right, right. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I spent a lot of time in the woods. <laughs> yes, yes. I was sitting in the woods, <laughs> and remember we talked about this actually on the broadcast last week. And and thank you. And I want to mention for uh for my community for those who may not have seen it, Reverend Marie interviewed me last week for Science of Mind magazine and uh, yes. it's another great conversation. So I invite you to check that out. So thank you for that, Marie. That was really- Oh, you're welcome. It was, it was a joy. Yes. As yeah. Always. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, so back to, yes, being out in the trees, being in nature mm -hmm. and remembering that we are part of a much larger whole, you know, and yes. that, uh, you know, that spirit knows what it's doing. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. A, a good reminder, isn't it? Mm hmm. Yes. Very, very good reminder. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so the next thing I guess that's uppermost, you know, because I feel like I'm, I move through and then I read a little something and I get pulled back in again and move through, you mm -hmm. know, keep moving through. Uh, but the thing that, that came to me um, was just, was the, the realization and knowing that that the negativity and the anger and all of that stuff that that I was feeling inside of me mm -hmm. was, was not helping the situation. Mm -hmm. It's not helping the situation. That in fact, right. that kind of anger and fear and all of those those really um, dark, heavy feelings that that we were going through is exactly what created the situation that we're in. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I agree. And and so you said that you were feeling it. I know a lot of times things will show up for me in my body. Mm -hmm. And I and so I just I have to shake it out. <laughs> you know, I have to move my body and do something to shift that energy of of fear or anger or 
um, frustration mm -hmm. because when it is so, um, so much, then it just shows up. I can feel it. I can feel the difference. And so doing exercises that will allow us to shift through mm -hmm. is very helpful. And there are many exercises in the book, um, My Grandmother's Hands. And I'm not sure if you are familiar with that book, but um, it is an excellent, it's an excellent book. And I highly recommend it, especially for moving trauma out of our bodies. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Author so is, the author is Resma. Resma, yes, yes, I can't. Yes, Resma Men Menikim, yes. Mm -hmm. And so I highly recommend it. And so what we want to do is that the the um, what's occurring right now is it's not new, and a lot of times we've been feeling this trauma in our bodies for years, for decades, for generations. And so how do we process it? How do we move through it? And uh, so we can begin where we are. Yeah. Yeah, so we can release it and begin where we are. And self-care, right. Self-care, right. self-care. And you know, the truth of it is that the only ones we can change is ourselves. Mm -hmm. Right, exactly. so, so watching the TV, looking at the, uh, the Facebook feeds, reading all of this stuff and getting worked up and not, you know, like, what, what do you do with that, right? Right, how do, right. How do you help the situation? Mm -hmm. Then, you know, the task is to, to, to be able to bring yourself back to center, continually bringing yourself back to center, because from there you can radiate, radiate out the love, the peace, mm -hmm. the compassion, mm -hmm. the empathy, the whatever it is that's needed mm -hmm. in that moment, because it's, it's, it's here. You have it in here already. Yes. And doing that intentionally is important because we're always living regardless and so we're always radiating and so um intentionally shifting our consciousness and um going within it begins with us because whether it's negative or positive it begins with one person each person and that's how change is made whether it's positive or negative right? yes Right. Yeah. It's, it's grassroots. I mean, it starts. Yes. Yes. Out, right. It's, a, it's not either or it's both ends. Right. Right. And let the grassroots begin with us, with each individual. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. So, you know, that then speaks to me to how how we move forward. You know, mm -hmm. um, I don't know, about you, but I, I know in my world, I have the whole spectrum. Right. I have people. Mm -hmm family that are that are very staunch supporters of the president and okay. uh, and have one belief or idea about what what happens and what things are all the way to the other end of the spectrum mm -hmm. um, right you know, and you know going from the uh very uh more traditional catholic you know more mm -hmm. christian to atheist right. you know mm -hmm. so the and the red and the, I mean, you know, the whole thing is there. Right. And, you know, I see lots of people, um, of my friends, of, of people on my Facebook feed that are saying, you know, well, if you don't believe this, just, you can just X me out of your life because I just X mm -hmm. you out. You know, and, and I understand that to a degree, right? We all need to have our boundaries mm -hmm. right. for our well being. But at the same time, how how do we bridge those gaps? I don't know if you if you have that if you're wrestling with any of that, but I know um, that I certainly am. Mm -hmm. You know, to have compassion right. for myself and for for all of us. Well, I I would share that not as much of a um, direct spectrum, you know, but yes, indeed, you know, I do know people, and I'm friends with people across the spectrum. The um, for a, a good friend of mine, you know, one one of our minister colleagues, um, and, and she is one of my mentors, and she shared, this is wow, seems like a couple of years ago, of how important it is to be and to live principle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so when we're coming from that that um, as a spiritual leader, you know. Mm -hmm to live on principle and to share. 
because um, not only in our own communities are we having um, supporting people, right? We are now virtual, right? I've always been virtual, but we're virtual. So we are supporting people wherever they are. Mm -hmm. And we do not live in a bubble. And so to support, we support all people, right? If we're talking about creating a world or, um, that works for everyone, that includes everyone. Right. Yeah. People so, that agree us, right? right. People, people that agree and people who don't. Right. Right. And so it's, it's understanding and living um, principle and compassion and, and living exactly what we teach. Now, it's not necessarily easy. And sometimes it's not easy at all. However, for for myself, it has been a um, a growing experience, a transformational experience. Mm -hmm. To know that the passion that um, people have for peace, right, is the same passion that, that other people have, but it shows up in another way. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, um, and I can't remember who it was. It might have been Wayne Dyer, but I'm not completely sure in the moment, speaking that everybody, um, everybody acts out of love. Right. And it may be the love for what is important to them, you know. So or a cry for it. Right, right. Exactly. Yeah. And so that love may not look like love to somebody else, but they're doing things that they feel is right. So that's where I spoke about that paradox, <laughs> you know, being looking at it from several different aspects. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and giving people the space to show up. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And work through and wrestle through whatever it is that they have. You know, because we're all in that process, I think, of releasing what doesn't serve us. Yes. Right? We're on a, on a microcosm, on a micro level, right? Each one of us mm -hmm. and also in the macrocosm and moving all the way through to nationally, the things that no longer serve us. Yeah, that's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, because that, that looks like so many that looks so many different ways. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, and, and I, I know I, I <laughs> a young woman one time who said, "I I, I don't want to hear anything about that. Change yourself first. What's it's not working out there. We need to change that. <laughs> I, I don't want to hear about it. Starts with me. I want to see out there changing. But right. no, right from a spiritual, from what we teach, from I know mm -hmm. from my personal experience. I can't change anybody else. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. We don't have any control over anybody else. We can only we we only can control have power over ourselves and how we choose to respond to the things that are put before us. Yes, and I I want to share one of the things that that we do and I really enjoy how we're doing that this year. And we do it we've been doing it for several years are the global themes. And the global themes this year is the evolutionary. It's timeless wisdom. Timeless wisdom, evolutionary vision. Right? Mm -hmm. Thank you. So when we look at those, it is an arc. It is a transformation of what we are um, seeking to experience over the entire year. And this is one of the ways in which we can, in fact, um, experience it ourselves and share it in our communities and have those um, deep conversations. And so um, what is it that we seek to experience this year? Mm -hmm. How can we, what can we have a common conversation about and bring in the, the events of what's going on in the world? How can we apply this practical spirituality? Right. And, and I would say that our global themes is definitely one of the ways to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, to yeah. find the commonalities. I mean, that's mm -hmm. that's a way that you sh you have empathy for people. Yes. Right? And, let's, let's look for the things that we share. Mm -hmm. Our differences are very apparent, right? Our yes. Obvious. Yes. The mm -hmm. things that um, that are common to all of us may not be quite as obvious for for people. And, yes. Right. Mm -hmm. And the utilizing the timeless wisdom 
and then looking at how we can evolve through our vision is, is important. And so having that available to us and just having conversations about it is important because we're talking about beginning this year and being mm -hmm. grounded and then stepping into visioning. Mm -hmm. And so we can pull in these events. How, how can we get grounded despite whatever is going on? What, what questions should we ask ourselves to mm -hmm. move forward? Mm -hmm. Right. And knowing that, well, you know, that we are going to move forward. Oh, yeah, but exactly. And how are we going to move forward? How, so we can choose how we want to do that, right? We yeah. can move forward and be angry and or we can move forward and um, seek to grow. Or what, what can we learn from this? What is the lesson or what's the gift? What's my next step? Right. What's our next step as humanity? Right. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so Marie, what is what does it look like when it's working? Mm. A world that works for everybody. What, is, what does that look like? <laughs> well, what does that look like? Transformation. Mm. Yeah. It looks like, um, it looks like transformation through change. And sometimes that looks like disrupt, disruption. You know? yeah. So I, I think that's what, what it looks like. What do we not not necessarily in the moment, but how do we come through it? Yeah, a world that works for everyone, and uh, the ability for everyone to share their voice. And so, for me, while I am a proponent of transformation and yes, liberation, I also like liberation without it um, impacting somebody physically, you know, ne negatively or, or harming somebody. And, but that's my viewpoint, but is that true liberation? You know, so liberation is, um, and transformation, I think that definition is an individual answer. So just like a, a world that works for everyone is an individual answer. So I think the ability to have the, the freedoms afforded to everyone and how each person uses it, that's up to them. And how, and if that is working for them and through them. So uh, being afforded the same for everyone. Yeah. The ability to have that, I think. You know, Daniel Pink, have you read Drive? The book Drive? It, it is like one or two books away, it's on my list. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's the science of motivation, right? And, mm -hmm. and us. And, you know, to go back to those universal principles, the things that mm -hmm. we do. Um, he says that that human beings, as human beings, we all share uh, a a need, a want for autonomy, for freedom, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. For, in, for us to to show up and to be who we are, um, right. have mastery over something, mm -hmm. something that you do, your your gifts, your talents, your joys, mm -hmm. and yes. feel like uh, you can do something and keep getting better at it, and you love it mm -hmm. so much. Want to keep trying to get better at it. Yes. That's, it's not a job. It's I get to do this. And then the last piece is purpose. Mm -hmm. Why are you here? We all come into this world for X amount of time. Everybody yes. is different. We all have different passions and, and gifts. You know, so so why are we here? And that's for every individual to answer for themselves. Every individual. And bringing it to a we're talking about the individual choices. The questions we ask ourselves every day is so important. I know one of the questions I ask myself before I say yes to anything is, do I want to leave this planet without doing this? Yeah. So, you know, asking those questions are important. So there, there's several, I'm not going to go through all the questions, but there's several questions that we can ask ourselves to live on purpose, to live intentionally, that it makes, a, it makes an impact on our lives and therefore the lives of everyone we encounter and we touch. Yeah, yes. be on yeah. purpose, right? Yes, yes, be on purpose. Live aligned and live on purpose. And when you're living yes. aligned, your, your purpose is going to just come that much you know, that's part of the alignment. 
Yes, yes. And then when you do that, you can live forward. Yes, yes. Yes, moment by moment. Yes. Moment by moment. I want to put here your how people can get a hold of you. So let me see how to do this. Oh, not your Phoenix is rising. Whoops. I have to create. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So create a banner and it should say Living Aligned Ministry, right? www. Living Aligned Virtual Ministry dot org is our website. And of course, this isn't working either. <laughs> okay, that's okay. I can I can just say it out loud. Living Aligned Virtual Ministry dot org is our website. And our online community, which is available 24-7, is Living Aligned Community dot org. Yes. Wonderful. And then, right. Fabulous. Thank you. Well, I- on my screen, oh, there you. We were all froze up, frozen there for a little bit, but now we're back. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so, did you want to say anything, Marie, in closing? Is there anything mm. left? Is there anything left? Well, for now, for now. Uh, for now. B. Simply B. You know. B. B in the moment. In the moment. So we're, we're always living. So just take that moment, those times to be, be present, you know, live a line. Yeah. Be peace. Be. Yes. Right. Be peace, be joy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. My sister, I want to thank you for joining us today and invite you to, uh, to the Zoom chat afterward if you're available. Yes. Thank you. Conversation with you and uh yeah i hope people will check out your your website and join your group your your community for some conversations and lots of great stuff you have going on thank you for having me and it's always i love connecting with community and your community thank you thank you marie love you and uh peace and blessing we'll see you in a little bit okay thank you Uh, yes Okay. Ah, oh, what a wonderful conversation. Thank you all for hanging in there with uh, all of our uh, technical difficulties. I'm still having some here. I actually got the prayer from, from uh, Reverend Teresa. And I, I am going to read that for you because it's really beautiful in leading into our um, offering. So if you'll take a moment to Again, just settle into that secret place of the Most High. This is a prayer for peace in our country that is by Reverend Teresa Feeberts from uh, CSL Cultural Coast in Sarasota. Prayer for peace for our country. There is one source, one substance, one power, one presence. I breathe into this presence now. This one is all encompassing, everywhere present, all powerful and all knowing. And in this moment, it is my peace. Peace fills my awareness now and I sense my body relax. Within and all around me is the divine presence of peace, clarity, order, harmony. And I am assured of divine action, divine right action everywhere unfolding. My consciousness now expands beyond politics, beyond right and wrong, beyond the news, beyond the hatred, beyond my own fear. I see through hatred to love. I see through violence to peace. I release every false idea that keeps me from experiencing and expressing God. I accept order and harmony instead of chaos. In every way, I open my mind and heart to spirit's availability and activity as my life. My consciousness is attuned to a greater reality. What I know for myself, I know for all. This peace, clarity, order, and harmony is emerging from within the hearts and minds of everyone in these United States of America, its citizens and elected leaders. Appearances of divisiveness, conflict, and violence are dissolved into this light of unity. Wisdom is the order of the day and there is clarity. I am divinely led. I am so grateful for this truth that resides in the mind of God and unfolds now through an unfailing law. This I accept, 
I expect and I celebrate. And so it is. And so we let it be. And thank you to Reverend Teresa Fieberts for that beautiful